Joining us on this episode is Henry Tu. Henry is a destination wedding photographer based in Seattle, Washington. Photographing with his husband Sergio all around the world, he's been recognized as one of Rangefinder's top 30 rising stars, amassed over 100,000 followers, and grown to be one of the most sought after educators, elopement photographers, and style trendsetters. I'm Kyle Wilson, and this is The Photographer's Problem. How's it going, Henry? Good. How are you? And thank you for so that great. introduction. <laughs> Uh, we love that we just got to talk like a week and a half ago, which is so great. Yeah, it was awesome teaching the live workshop uh, and everybody was just commenting. It's also so nice to see people interact with what we say, you know. Yeah, everyone was from all over the world, too. It seemed like we had so many geographical locations coming in. Um, I want to start asking you just a series of questions. These are questions I ask every person I interview. Um Feel free to answer them in short or long ways in whatever way you feel comfortable with. Yeah. Um, what is, what's what been your most proud moment in your career? Uh, I think the proudest has to be when I completely quit my full-time job as a nurse and pursue something that is not very well known to have like a stable life, right? Like I think with nursing, I get that stability. Like you always know when your next income was going to be. Um, and I worked, you know, you go to college, you get certified for, to be in the field. I work in a cardiac ICU. So that require a lot of education, continuing education. And just to like totally walk away from that, that was scary at first. But I think looking back, like retrospectively, it was one of the best decisions that I made for my photography career. That's amazing. How long has that been now? It's been, so I, I walked away in uh, late 2019 and at this time we are in 2023, so four, four years. Uh, I did come back, I did come back for a little bit in the pandemic 2020 because uh, my manager texted and he was like, we really need nurses, like we're running out of nurses and they turned my ICU into COVID ICU and so you need even more people because it's usually one on one one nurse on one patient and so for a quick maybe two and a half months i went back and just worked in the COVID icu um, before things got busy again with photography and then i had to get back to photography oh that's amazing um what's been your worst business decision oh my gosh um so many <laughs> I think the worst thing that I did was uh, really not charging my worth. And I think the charging your worth sounds so fluffy. Like it sounds like something like, how do you, how do I measure my worth? Like, how do I know? And I think a lot of time, uh, th there's a story that I share with some of my mentees when I uh, do mentorships and I photographed this couple um, for their engagement photos and I charged them like about at that time, I think it was about 200, maybe $300 for, dollars for this engagement sessions. Months later, months later, uh, they came back and they texted me and said, hey, I just got back from my elopement and uh, I just want to say thank you for you know showing us how to pose and all that because we use that knowledge to, to for our elopement photos and I looked at the elopement photos and I saw who photographed it and it was a really well-known photographer someone that I actually look up to and they charge around ten thousand dollars for 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 this package and you know i know that is engagement versus elopement uh so i can't really compare apple to oranges but at the same time you can see the difference between two huge disparity to ten thousand and that that's just one of those things where i'm like oh my gosh i i think i was charging so low because that i was stuck in my own head about thinking that I'm only worth that much, like that I cannot raise my price because then nobody would book me. But at the same time, receiving that feedback, knowing that I was able to deliver something that they hold on and bring to the next chapter of their life, that's really make me realize I, I'm worth more than just that one day. Like, like these photos carry on. And I think that I, I should be able to charge a little bit more than just $200 for engagement photos. <laughs> I love, I love hearing when uh, really successful wedding photographers like yourself hearing their early on rates. And like, I remember 
really needing to pay rent and mm-hmm. really being broke and needed to text my landlord who was also my roommate in this house uh hey i i'm not gonna make it this month and just when i went to go do it he he said hey my sister's getting married could you do this mm. and all all like what we can arrange it and i said oh can we like do it for this month's rent like really rapidly because i was in panic mode mm-hmm. and he was like yeah that sounds great and then that was 250 dollars <laughs> it's like 250 bucks it was so little um i should have obviously negotiated that for like can i get like a year's worth of rent <laughs> um but it was like i needed this month um, you know you know what's fun like, what's crazy about your story my story and i'm pretty sure so many photographer story out there is none of us really go into this industry thinking about this is where the money is at you know like you don't because if you want to go into an industry where this is where i'm going to get my money you you can do like go into tech like take a a cam a tech thing and you can be in the tech world you can be you know there's so many other things that you can do the thing about being a creative a photographer dealing with art and pursuing photography is so risky and we all have to face so many things but when you you just rewind and just like pull yourself out like just zoom out and look at the whole industry as a whole i feel like many of us are just trying our best we just want we just want to take beautiful photos and we want to help someone on their wedding day and the money thing i mean where i am at right now uh it it took lots of hustling to be able to build a brand that people can recognize and trust. But I think people don't, what people don't see is like yourself, Kyle, you've been so successful. I looked up to you for so long that we all have to go through a period of our career that people don't know about. And that's a beautiful thing that. Oh yeah. I don't, I don't think I've even ever shared that rent story publicly because it's Mm. so long ago, but it's like, yeah, I, I needed $250 to stay in this one room of this house in yeah. Rockford, Illinois. Like it was such a difficult, different time. Yeah. Um, what's been your best business decision? Oh, uh, the best business decision has to be when I recognize that there's enough room for everybody in this industry and I don't have to please everybody. And what I mean by that, it, this could be for photographers, this could be for clients, it could be for anything that you think about. There's so many people out there doing so many things. And so once I recognize that I don't have to please everybody, then I really understand, hey, I quit my job to really do something, to be my own boss. Might as well do something that I actually love and not feeling like, ah, I have to show up today and shoot this wedding or I have to be with this couple. Uh, I don't want to be somewhere where you just feel like resentful uh, of your decisions. And ever since I realized that, I niche down to do what I actually want to do. Um, so instead of, you know, forcing myself to go photograph the wedding that you, just I have to take because I need the money. I now get to actually say what I want to do on my website, push it out there on my social media channels, and then just attract the kind of clients that are really aligned with the kind of work I want to do. Something more intimate. It doesn't mean elopements always. It doesn't mean just the couple. Sometimes I do take on weddings of 60, 70, 100 people. Um, but those couple, when they come to me, I get to really connect with them on a diva level so that we can actually have an intentional day instead of just a wedding day that to, to entertain other people. Yeah. And that's your Saturday too. That's Saturday is my special day too. I want to be at weddings that I really want to be at. And there's such a, there's such a power, uh, and like almost self-satisfaction in saying no to, oh, hey, you oh, you're having 250 people mm-hmm. in a ballroom and 20 people on each side of your wedding party. That sounds great. You're going to have a great time. Here's someone else that I think will fit your needs much better. Mm-hmm. And it feels so good to not have to take those because either right. I feel like I'm supposed to or I feel like I want to pay the bills mm-hmm. or such and such. Um, what's the camera that you carry with you most? 
Uh, right. Uh, I've been a Sony person ever since I started. Uh, I think in our live uh, workshop that we teach, uh, I mentioned that I started uh, in 2017. So my very first camera was actually a Sony a7 II. Uh, so that's all I know. All, the mirrorless is all I know. And currently I'm using Sony a7 IV, um, two of them. Uh, all uh, G Master lenses because uh, they are the fastest that I can get. Um, and then the only other non Sony thing I have is a DJI uh, Mavic Pro 2 a drone that I nice. Uh, yeah, yeah. Your drone shots are really beautiful. Um, well, thank you. I've always thought about getting one, and I just I never committed the money to it because I went ah that's it seems it's a remote control helicopter with a camera. It seems like something a little kid me would just freak out over. Yeah. Uh, and I still want to buy one to this day, but I have no real use for it. And yet I still want it so bad. And then I see photos yeah. like yours and I go, oh, even just for that one off picture, it would be so yeah. incredible. Right. Because then when I think about like a typical wedding day or an elopement day, I probably fly that drone for seven minutes max because like, yeah. my battery lasts 15 minutes ish so i fly about up to like seven to ten and that's a long time flying because usually you take it out and you take a quick uh, photo that can be like a minute or two so when you think about the amount of time you use it it's not going to be as much as if you were to invest in like a better body uh that camera yeah body. and the fact that you're not really shooting video you're not trying to cover an entire right. video day you're just trying to get right. a couple of individual things out of it which yeah. is pretty amazing right and then you um, know, thinking about like city like metropolitan area like chicago la uh, seattle you can't really fly them much inside yeah like, not yeah not exactly. not much can't not do much. <laughs> can't do much <laughs> oh national park you know yeah. yeah 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 that's i'm way more afraid to fly it in a national park than i am in the city because yeah. yeah depending on the city you're in they probably might right. not even care <laughs> yeah. um so what's your problem uh, my current problem right now is I am actually in the middle of rebranding and really okay. thinking about what my, uh, the future, like what, I, what do I really want to do? Um, and I, I sit down, I think, you know, as I'm getting older, I'm in the industry for a couple of years now, I'm still pretty young, I would say, but I am getting older and I feel like with spending time for elopement alone can be very time time consuming i yeah travel is fun but travel is not always as glamorous as what social media makes it out to be and so i want to think about something that i want to do that i can still photograph so do intimate intentional weddings and elopement but at the same time, spend more time at home instead of just on the road always. And so I'm thinking about, um, I've actually been working on the back end. I've been working and trying to rebrand myself in a way that uh, when people go to my website, they can see more example and, about wedding photography as well and not just elopement because I, I do know that all over my, my branding, uh, everywhere you go, it just say elopement, elopement, elopement. Uh, but I don't want the intimate wedding couple to feel left out that when they visit my website that I, that I don't take them like, but uh, yeah, you can very easily go either way. I have felt when I've ever shared pricing, mm -hmm. like there's obviously a ton of different, um, theologies around the way you share what your pricing might be on your website. Uh, my approach has always been like something like, Hey, I start it here. Um, this is kind of what people average spent. That was something I did for a while and I don't want to exclude I'm trying to not include $2,000 random small weddings, mm -hmm. but I'm also still trying to allow for those smaller intimate things that might be in the, the mm -hmm. sub three or 4,000 category to come through as well. And it's, it's hard to go either too hard one way or too hard the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. Um, as you, I feel like when you're doing rebranding, you can kind of look at it from a couple, cause you're obviously influenced by other people's businesses and brands, whether they be in this industry or not. Um, I, I found when I was doing it, I was a little piece of my, my thought process was, oh, I really like what A, B, and C is doing. Mm. I'm going to grab on a little pieces of that, but I'm also going to look backwards at what I've been doing that I don't want to be doing anymore. And so mm. it sounds like you focused a bit on, oh, I don't want to be away from home all the time. You want to be spending time with your family um, and you want to like kind of be a little more settled and chilled and maybe less stressed from travel. Has there been stuff that you look towards and you go, I really like 
the way this person or this business is doing it this way or that way within my local area or the country or wherever that you're trying to like grab inspiration from? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Everything you're sharing is so valuable. It's exactly what I'm thinking in my head too, which is, you know, looking back and like, yeah, I love doing this, but moving forward, like what are something that I want to do? And, uh, you know, I look, I, I, I remember when I first started the people that I look up to, they're still the same people I look up to today. I love Jordan Voth uh, work. He's based out of Seattle as well. I think he was one of the first people that I actually knew about, oh, like people go outside and get married. Like I didn't know about that until I started Instagram scrolling and then found that he does all of this outside work. I mean, Bench Heist do stuff like that. And invented he the, invented the modern elopement basically. Just yeah, one shoe. Heist, it went big enough to make make our jobs what they are now, I feel like. Right. right. I think these these are like the photographers that really make an impact and change the industry. And I, I still look up to all all of them. And I do see the, the, the things that they do, you know, as I, when I first started, they've been in the industry for a while, they've been in it. And now that I've been in it for a while, that means their longevity in this industry is way longer than I have been. And I see that, yes, they still do the outdoor, the nature, the intimate wedding, but at the same time, they still photograph, you know, like the, um, like the wedding, uh, maybe a, 80, 90, 100 people. But when you look at all of these photos and listen to the story of these weddings, you can still feel that these weddings are full of intentionality and full of the fact that couples sit down with the photographer and share and discuss about what they want to do, what they want to experience. Uh, that could mean a two days event. That could mean a three days event instead of, you know, that, hey, contact me, inquire. I, you don't hear from me for months and then I'll show up and photograph your wedding for like seven, eight hours and then goodbye. Like, so yeah. So those are the, some of the names yeah. I, I am definitely been looking up to and oh, that's, still continue. That's amazing. Yeah. I think what's so cool about wedding photography and as more people in like, even in this role, as people come into this company and they start to learn about this industry, they mm -hmm. start to find out how eclectic the wedding photographer business format and or workflow and or lifestyle is and so there's so many different versions and i know there's this venn diagram of there's a circle of people that just get married by the two there's just the two of them so they tend to often float towards something with more travel and then there's this other venn other half of this venn diagram where they have 100 people and if you have 100 people you're probably not getting married in the mountains you're not going to get 100 people to go there so you're going to be in the city and that unfortunately does often result in kind of uh, the more traditional wedding. Um, but there is this overlap where there is this group of people that say, Hey, we still want to have a hundred people, but we are totally the energy that says we want to have an intimate intentional day with all of our relationships here. And then I think of just a couple of weeks ago, I interviewed two people who I feel like have just this wonderful overlap. Um, Melody joy out of Edinburgh and Kat Ecklebaum white out of uh, Innsbruck, Austria. Mm. And Kat only wants to shoot things in her local two or three, four hour drive within the mountains. Mm -hmm. She's really an advocate for people working within their own environment. And she doesn't want to shoot things in her city. She wants to be in the mountains, but she only wants to work within a drivable distance. And then Melody wants to only work within her town, despite living two hours in the highlands. Mm -hmm. She goes, I don't want to go out there. I want to be home with my husband and at mm -hmm. home in my bed and like working and having a coffee. I want to shoot couples just in the city. And so she can find these really intimate elopements where it's just two people, no guests, but they just want to get married in the city. Mm -hmm. um, and you can obviously, you're going to start navigating towards, you know, more bookings that are within, you know, the, the places that you can be in your own bed at night, which as I continued to travel and I was doing two or three flights a week and jumping from country to country and state to state, the mm -hmm. times when I got to like, go to my own bed at night were the best. <laughs> yeah. And I started to really seek those out more. So it'll be really cool to see the type of work you create out of Seattle, just because mm -hmm. I know that I know that city pretty well. And um, there is this incredible um, subculture of wedding vibe there that is, mm -hmm. they want the Jordans and they want the Henry's and they want the Kristen Parker's, but they aren't going to go out into the mountains to do it. But they're also not just kind of a big boring ballroom wedding either. So <laughs> it'll be really cool to see yeah. how your business starts to grow that part of it. Yeah, I'm super excited. Yeah. It's been, um, I keep hearing it's been a pretty interesting year for bookings. Um, I, I'm pretty interested to see how people are 
advertising or not advertising. You know, I talked to some people and they go, I don't pay any money for this. Mm -hmm. It's all organic. And they're really lucky that they can stay on their organic train. You know, mm -hmm. I, I had put a lot of eggs in the Instagram basket years ago and it was really good and well for me until I just hated it and didn't want to do it anymore. Yeah. And now it's unachievable to get back. There's no way I can get over 300 likes in a post anymore unless I'm like really lucky mm -hmm. um, because I just don't want to chase it. Mm -hmm. But are you doing any advertising out? Like, do you do any paid stuff? Do you pay like the not.com or anything like that? Uh, yeah. So the last ever since, uh, just like yourself, I started on Instagram as well. Uh, at first, you know, I was still doing my full time nursing career. And so posting on Instagram, which is something fun for me, like I just post something. Yeah. A hashtag location tag and somehow someone find it and they book me and so as you could imagine uh, earlier on in my career where I didn't have consistent work to show I only have like maybe an engagement session here another engagement session there um, I get booked when I post right but and then if I don't post I don't get booked because then those photos would just like die down like yeah. you might get some engagement within that first 24 hours and after that it's kind of gone and so uh, kind of the time where I transitioned from being a full-time nurse to solely being a part-time nurse and a part-time photographer, I invested a lot of my time and energy into learning search engine or, uh, optimization, SEO. And so I, I put a lot of work into my SEO. Uh, so since 2019 until now, majority of how clients find me are still from Google search. Uh, that's they fantastic. Might, yeah, that's always like the one of the thing that I rely on the most. Um, you know, I went, I gave, I gave a quick cruise on your Google, uh, just your, your results the other day. And I saw you had a massive amount of Google reviews, um, which I think is really beneficial, especially yeah. if, you, uh, if listeners don't already know, if you go and Google Seattle wedding photographer, the top 10 on Google aren't even the top 10 you think they're going to be. They're, they're <laughs> oftentimes just people that have been there forever. There's two or three maybe that, you know, and then the rest are just kind of not to diminish those other people. I don't know who you are. Mm -hmm. um, and Dylan Howell had told me years ago, he goes, your your competition isn't Benj and Jordan and Kristen. It's mm -hmm. the top 10 on Google. And so I saw you had so many Google reviews. Are you asking clients for that within your workflow? Is that something on the back end when you deliver stuff? You go, yeah. I would love a Google review. Or has it been happening naturally? Because I never chased that. Yeah. But it was one of those like, lengthy to-do lists things <laughs> items or it's like i should probably incorporate that into my flow right and i uh, i do i do ask every single couple to leave me a review um i this is not bragging uh, and i think if you're searching for a seattle wedding photographer or washington elopement photographer and you go to the map pack i think i currently have the highest amount of reviews out of everybody there and I'm i think so too yeah i think i am 190 something i'm almost close yeah to. yeah i think when i looked it was like i thought it was like 159 but you're probably close you're probably way more right than i am <laughs> yeah um is that the only source that you ask people to drop reviews for you or do you care about because there's all these other wedding mm. vendor review spaces and i think it gets a little uh fragmented if you start asking them to do each one but it's if you can commit to one yeah yeah so when i i ask for clients i do ask for two places i in my workflow i ask them to leave me a review on google and if they have time copy and paste it into my wedding wire uh, uh listing um the reason why i say that is because you you have to th put yourself in the shoes of the clients as well like writing a review may, people might not know what to say like how to write it and how long is this going to take so if you spell out in your email asking for a review how important this is, is for a small business like myself, like how your review can help me really get more clients just like them. Uh, and then this is going to take you probably three to four minutes to do. So right away, people can say, ah, this is not going to take a long time. Um, like think of the last time you get like a questionnaire from someone from like, let's say, uh, uh, like narratives and a, a, hey i we just have a questionnaire so that you can give feedback so we know how to improve our products if they tell you how many questions are going to be in it or how long approximately this is going to take there's a higher chance that you will take it versus you're like is this going to be like half an hour of my time yeah do i have enough time right now while i'm checking this email <laughs> yeah. or should i push this to the end of the day i right. think that's really great yeah that's a really really great piece of advice and falls into like the i think mm -hmm. client education is huge yeah. And it should be at the forefront of almost every, like, years and years and years and years ago, my dad was a photographer. He did a bunch of kind of things. But one of the things he mentioned was, like, if I mail a product to someone and the mail loses it, 
Mm-hmm. It's not the male's fault. It's my fault. It's my problem. I am the business person. Oh, and so yeah. I've always tried to think about that with client bookings. Uh, if the credit card merchant square transaction doesn't go through, that's my problem. Mm-hmm. If they don't know how to submit this Google review or they don't know how to do this thing because it's their first or second wedding, um, that's it's my problem that they mm-hmm. – that these hiccups have come along the way and I've got to find solutions for them. Yeah. So I think incorporating that um, terminology into your Google review request is yeah. really, really amazing. Yeah. And I asked them to just copy and paste it into wedding wire just so there's another place. Uh, Cause what I noticed with Google too, is uh, for some reason, the last couple of years, ever since the pandemic, sometimes people would leave a review, but the review will not be populated or saved. Mm. I do have clients who wrote a review, screenshot it, send it to me and, and say something like, oh, we were so happy to write you a review. I uh, hope you liked it. This is what we wrote. And on my end, I go to Google review and that review never got popped up on Google, uh, even though I have like a screenshot of them like writing it. That's like Yelp. Yelp did that issue for a long time. Yeah. Too, they got really really not transparent with the reason as to why either. Right, right. And so I tried to dig deep and I still don't have the the most uh, apparent answer to fix this issue. Uh, most of the thing that I found online could be they may use the language that not uh, be appropriate for everybody to read. And so I tried to really think about like what kind of word like in the review that's not you know like because in in all honesty the way i communicate my my clients because we work together hand in hand during planning during the whole day so we become sort of like friends and the way you talk with friends is no longer like you talk with a business like sometimes you're like yes bitch like we would say stuff like that and then maybe i'm thinking maybe if they say something like that then it might get removed and so i try to be like hey like in my email to client, like when you leave me a review, make sure the Google is still like PG 13, keep the language around that area. Yeah, I could see that. <laughs> I could see Google absolutely filtering those because more often than not in a Google review structure in businesses that aren't like ours, typically reviews are for, you know, people are going to go put a bad review. So I could see them wanting to filter things out like that. But yeah. in ours, we have the benefit of people are being so excited and yeah. they're jazzed about what they got. But um, I mean, that's another good, really good piece of advice just to let people know, hey, Google's Google and it's kind of weird. Please right. keep this kind of PG-13. It's going to take like three minutes to do. I really appreciate it. It's so beneficial. Um, and once you have so many of them, I bet it's even easier now. I think when it's like someone goes to leave me one or two, it's like whatever. But if you've got a hundred and something, they're like, oh, yeah, people his other clients do this for him. We want to be, we want to be as good as his other clients to him. I I do agree. I think in a way, I think it does help my business a lot that people see reviews and each of these reviews are like paragraphs long. And it's not just like, he was great. Goodbye. (laughs) Um, Have you had any bad reviews that you've had to deal with? uh, So far I did have one. uh, And uh, this was not on my Google review. It was like somewhere I can't like, this is a while now. The bad ones are always on a really weird one, so you can kind of ignore yeah, them. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm I'm grateful. At the same time, if someone who's listening to this right now and you have like a one star review or like a four star, like a three, whatever star review on your Google review that people might be able to see, I don't think you have to freak out at all. Yeah. I think the fact that if you have other positive review, it might drown out the one negative one. And the thing we have to be really honest with ourselves here too is is you know regardless of who you are and how much you have tried and you have tried your absolute best to serve this wedding to be the photographer to to do everything right there's still going to be something that's on the other end people did not perceive it that way and that's okay like that that it's okay for your for you're not a bad person or a bad photographer if you have a negative review and in all honesty, from what I've I've learned, if you have a negative review on your Google, it actually helps your Google search sometimes because it shows that you're real, like a, you're a real business. That sometimes yeah, you you're not just getting five star <laughs> yeah. bots to leave you yeah. long chat GPT reviews. Right, um, right. I do agree. I think it does drown out. I mean, if I was to go purchase um, any item, anything from Amazon or a burger down the street, if I saw 99 good reviews for a burger and then one and someone said, oh, this was the worst, they burned it, I hated it, it's yeah. still probably a pretty good burger. 99 yeah. people thought it was good. I'm really not that worried about that one. Right. And I've I've had that one. And I think 
every year I have one wedding that doesn't go like yeah just as perfect as I would have liked. And it leans a little heavier in the like it didn't go well camp. Mm-hmm. And I think there's always one every year that's just like that. Not everybody has that. Maybe it's just me. Uh, yeah. But I've only really ever had one that I can think of left a review. And it's so, so, so long ago. And it was yeah. a different business and with different business partners. And I had way less control over it. Um, yeah. Now it's now it just seems like everybody's but, probably pretty set. Right. And you know what's crazy is you could get like 99 beautiful five-star review and you get that one four star. That and one you won't sleep that night. And you won't, <laughs> you won't sleep for the, that night or the next couple of weeks. And years from now it's like ptsd almost it just flashed back in your head and it's like fuck can i use this black whatever oh this yeah is- yeah you can say <laughs> you said blow out your ass last one you're good <laughs> say whatever you want. Yeah. i was like you know it's 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 one of those things about being human as being human is that you it's, people could say you look so good today you you oh i love your hair i love your shirt but there's one thing people say something about you uh, one negative doesn't not even fully negative could be not as ideal a compliment and then it keeps us awake at night and i think channel into that like just know that it's okay like we're all human i, I think we're all trying our best every day you know and and so yeah. so what if you get some negative reviews i think um if anything, if in my end, whenever things don't go as planned, if I get a negative review or I finish this engagement session, I'm like, why did they wear this and not wear something else? The pattern or the color didn't match. Or if I show up to a, a wedding, I'm like, why didn't I have, why did we run so late today? And everything feel like rush. Whenever there's that thought in the back of my head, like, why, why, why? I honestly, the drive home, like driving home from a session or just sitting here, I just take a moment, just like ask myself, have I tried my absolute best to address some of these things in advance? Like how you share your story about your dad, if you mail something and the mailman lost it, have I tried my best to prevent this from happening? Did I label it right? Where did I label it? So in terms of photography and working with clients, I would then ask myself, did I educate these clients about color palette and how their clothes can complement the environment that we're going to be in? Did I do my best to know I am the photographer, I deal with light more than the clients. Normal people don't think about direction of light, intensity of light, of light, time of day to get that light. I do. I know that. Did I communicate with them in advance so they know that at this time we need to be here, the other time we need to be there? If there's time to travel, did I already take into consideration traffic might happen so that I plan enough buffer time? And you know, so if there are something that within my control that I didn't do, that go into my iPhone note, and then that would go into my client resources or somewhere I can communicate with the client. If that's something that's totally outside of my control, that it just one off, like, you know, hand makeup was going so well and out of nowhere, someone accidentally spilled something on someone. And that's the one thing nobody can control that. Like really this, you cannot save enough buffer time for that. Why don't you bring extra dresses, Henry? <laughs> right? This is really on you. It's, do it's you bring, <laughs> in my do you have, an, emer- camera do you have an emergency kit in your bag? Do you have like, um, I have like a sewing kit, ibuprofen, Pepto-Bismol. Oh yes. Uh, the Thai yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yes. Uh, but I, I the sewing have- kit so- has come out three, four times because people are like, Hey, this dress isn't whatever. And they're like, I'm like, I got you. I got a sewing kit right yeah. here. Let's go. One of the really be- fun moments that I did was uh, this, this wedding, this couple book, my husband, he's a wedding planner, event, like elopement planner, stylist. And sometimes the couple would book him and I at the same time. And this wedding during getting ready, the dress could not be zipped. And someone broke the zipper. Like someone literally trying to zip up the dress and they broke it. My husband pull out the sewing kit and sew the dress while she yep, the, while that's was the exact it. same situation. I it's, we literally like, sew her into the dress, and then the whole day we, we take what nobody would knew. But at the end of the day, we have to cut like like get a pair of scissors and really cut her out of her dress. And yes, like things like that can happen. Yeah, I I try to think circling back to like what you were saying about problems and things that come up i i think about just all the little hurdles i've run into and i go oh man i'm i'm really annoyed that when i go into an engagement session they're wearing clothes that they just bought 
they just bought them this week. So they're not comfortable in them yet. They're not confident in them yet. Well, let's, let's put that into my education mm -hmm. guide. Oh, I I'm getting a lot of emails where clients are trying to book me on a Saturday at noon because mm -hmm. they're already, they're busy Monday through Friday. They have jobby jobs. Um, and then Saturday and Sunday is their weekend and they're trying to squeeze this in with all their other social obligations. So, well, let's do it at noon and they just don't know any better. So let's put that in there too. I had one for a while where I was trying to remember to book my pre-wedding consult. So the one like two weeks prior, let's just run over everything verbally. Um, I would do that all by, by hand. And then I realized I was missing them or I'd get really close to like the wedding day. We'd be talking on a Wednesday and their wedding Saturday. Well, let's, let's fix that. Let's, let's go back in time and let's, mm -hmm. let's automate that to push out two weeks prior. Um, and there's just all these little things. And the big blanket one that I put out is that there's stuff that I can't control. Like the DJ suddenly starts playing unknown, unexpected games and sunsets happening now. I don't have time for this. Yeah. Well, what can I do to help that? And so really early on, I tell clients that I would like to be as communicative with them as their wedding planner. Like mm -hmm. anytime you want to call, email, text, hey, do we need 10 more minutes for this thing? You sure do. Mm -hmm. Let's let's communicate it. So I'm at the very least, I'm I'm disposable to them or whatever the word is. I'm accessible to them yes. well in advance. So that yes. way when it comes to the day of, I'm not presented with, whoa, why is this happening yeah. in my timeline? Why did this? I don't want to show up. I don't want a call sheet. I don't want something I've never seen before. I want to help dictate that. Yeah. And so the more I can do, and like you were saying, the more you can do just like help educate those clients to fix all the little problems and like kind of guide the water down the river just a little bit to the thing that you want. And it starts at the top. Like I don't have any weddings on my website with photos and doors. Mm -hmm. All the photos are outside because I want to book outside weddings. It mm -hmm. doesn't mean I won't book inside weddings, but mm -hmm. I want to, facilitate the water down to at least close to where I want to be. So yeah. Um, yeah. I think client resources, when I first learned that people, I think it was, I think it was Benj or Jordan. Mm -hmm. When I first learned people were sending out like an education guide for mm -hmm. their engagement session or for their wedding. And I had no idea that was a thing. I've just been talking to everybody. Mm -hmm. um, and that was just so helpful. And I think there's a lot of pieces in this industry that, people that are in the, the the sub 10 weddings a year camp, they're just getting into it. They, they don't even know. Mm -hmm. And so pieces of information like this or trying to get Google reviews mm -hmm. or having a sewing kit on hand or also those little plastic things that high heels stick into, those are killer. <laughs> yeah. uh, so people can stand on docks. Having yeah. those on hand not only just makes everybody in the wedding party think you're like, a badass prepared wedding photographer yeah like they freak they're like i thought this is a wedding planner thing like no we do this too right um but also it just helps the day go better and that's way better for you mm -hmm. yeah and also like if you're shooting wedding wedding or even in an intimate elopement with some guests doing that going above and beyond you're really marketing yourself there like you're ad advertising yourself to the bridesmaids to to the maid of honor to the one who's will be getting married or they might not be getting married soon or they have already been married but they know someone who might need a photographer sometimes in a, in, at a later time and really like that just free advertising right there yeah and if you're booking the right clients if the clients are already in the personality uh wheelhouse mm -hmm. that you want more than likely because they are that kind of people the people that they surround themselves with are just more of them and those yeah. are totally the people that you want do you um do you carry business cards on the day of? Do you have cards? Oh my gosh, I should always, but I keep forgetting. <laughs> I have business cards. I have two hundred and fifty of them in that drawer right there, right. and I bet I've given out three. Yeah. I bet I've given out three because yeah. I I just I should I should have a little stack in every bag that yeah. I have that a camera might ever enter, but like it's so often I'm like oh well can I see your phone can you we can just you can go to Instagram. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. Not gonna lie, and then I think the difference, um, I for me as well is I do so many intimate things, where the people I notice that keep asking for my business cards are usually whether it's like uh, an Airbnb owner or a venue owner. It's like, for example, like most of what I do is intimate elopement. The elopement people bring their 
parents and maybe a brother and a sister. And so it's so within the family that they can get my contact info from. Yeah, they already know who you are. Yeah. Like the easily, like if, even if they need my info later on, they can get it from the bride, the groom uh, and all that. Uh, but like, for example, I was in Hawaii uh, last week. I photographed at this uh really small venue like this venue is half like this time of the year is a venue but for the rest of the year it's just an airbnb like that is kind oh, of nice. house turns really small out. yeah really small and so i was working and the owner was just running around and the owner came out and was like hey can i you have a business card that i can have and i was like oh darn it like i don't have it but here's my instagram <laughs> <laughs> and it feels really silly every time it happens too yeah <laughs> uh for me it's usually like a It'll be like the girlfriend of a groomsman. It'll be like, he's not going to care. He's he's close with the bride and groom, but like maybe she's right. not. That's and so right. she'll be like, hey, do you have a card? Like, I really like what you're doing today, blah, blah, blah. And then, of course, of course, I don't have the card. But yeah. and then there's the uh, I'm sure you, you might get less of this because you shoot intimate weddings. But for years, my my Pelican case is just full of other vendors freaking mm -hmm. business cards for their planners djs florists and every time they give them to me i feel bad because i'm like this is hitting the trash there's zero way i'm going to keep this i have all your information i've collected it from the client in tave i do not want this card in my yeah. life yeah and so um, that's that's another thing that i was i always feel so bad because someone would give me something and then i'm the type of like okay i'll put it in my backpack or my wallet or something and i go home and then my wallet would get so full and i'm like these are all gonna go somewhere. yeah this is this is garbage. Do you um this is this is like a really distinct question, but I think it's every region of the country engages in this differently, I found out. Mm -hmm. Um how what's your vendor relations like? So let's say I'm a florist. Now maybe I'm a florist with a thousand followers, or maybe I'm a florist with a hundred thousand mm -hmm. followers. I do think those are two different conversations. Um and I want your photos from today that that you took. Um mm -hmm. Can I get those? Am I automatically going to get a gallery of those when the wedding's wrapped? Do I need to pay for them? Mm, what's, yeah. what's your process for that? Yeah. So my thought is I love supporting fellow small businesses. You know, when someone create beautiful flowers for a wedding day, they probably want those photos as well to show like their work, just like I want to show my work. Um, it doesn't cost me anything just to send photos to people. If anything, it would gain me more credibility for, and also more my, putting my name out there. Uh, when your vendor is using your photos, they tag you on social media channel. So their followers are aware of you. When they pu put your photo on their own website, I ask for a backlink. I say, can you please credit Henry to act to my website? And when they credit back to my website, I earn a backlink. And for those of you who are not aware of SEO, when you get a backlink, that's, that's just to show Google how your domain authority that's just to show how trustworthy your website is and so the content you put out would get ranked higher and so that's when you're going to be on page one of google more and so there's a whole lot more benefit than even than trying to charge people money like money for it uh so yeah if it's uh vendors that we're all working together i don't charge anything there is one thing that i always want to make sure though is even though I am the photographer that has rights to the photo and the client sign a contract say that I have full rights, I still view wedding photos as something very intimate. It's some, that's someone book, for example, let's just say I'm the, I'm the person who got married and hire photographers. I, those are my photos. Those are my wedding day. It's represent represent who I am, the people I love, the emotion, the vulnerability, like I don't want everybody just to see it. And so what I do is I ask for permission from couple uh, in my one of my questionnaire that I sent out. Uh, I have this one month before the wedding day, the elopement day, I sent out this one last questionnaire to ask about what's important for them. What do they want to get capture in it? There's a checkbox. Are you OK with me sharing your photos with vendors? And if they say yes, then I'll go ahead and send. If they say no, then I don't automatically send unless people ask. And then that's going to be another conversation later on to the couple. Like, hey, these people ask for photos. Are you okay with sharing the whole gallery? Or are you okay with just sharing like maybe five, six photos? Yeah, I completely okay. agree yeah. with that as well. Like I will, I'll never send a whole gallery to... I think a planner tends to get it. A planner almost gets it 
directly from the garden groom more often than not. So I'm not too worried about them. Mm-hmm. Um, but if it's a florist or the caterer or table linens decor, whatever, um, I don't really tend to fire questions over at the client for that because as long as they're not in it, um, mm-hmm. if it's just photos of inanimate objects. Um, but yeah, if the people are in it, then I'm like, hey, your uh, venue is reaching out. They'd really love to feature this and or put this on a preferred list because that's usually part of the deal too um and like are you cool with this so i think that is a really good approach and an important one to remember that we do own these images they are legally copyright act of 1976 Mm -hmm. (laughs) our images but and we can do whatever we want with them but Mm -hmm. it's there's some um there's some morality and ethics within yeah i think it's a human thing you know like it just it doesn't hurt to just ask yeah um circling back just to touch on seo there's a resource that i'm sure you know already but i like to tell everyone about it because i learned it from dylan howell and i think it's so good uh it's an app on your iphone called seo edge Mm -hmm. and it's an incredible mobile app to check your website and search for any variety of keywords as well as to see a general overall arching of how many backlinks you currently have Mm -hmm. and in comparison to uh everyone else and that you can also so so i could type in your website and see how many backlinks you've got. I can also see where you're ranking for X, Y, Z words in comparison to me. Uh, and I know that Google search console is going to do all that stuff for people too, but um, it's a really great mobile way. If you're like, Hey, I'm posting a blog in Iceland today. Mm-hmm. I know that I'm targeting these certain keywords that I haven't replicated on my website. I've posted it everywhere. It needs to go. I kind of want to like be right on top of how it's doing. It's, it's a really handy, handy resource for people. Yeah. It can be a little addicting. You start scrolling. You're like, I got to refresh. Am I, am, I'm like F fiving all day through my, uh, through my blog post. Like, is it doing well? <laughs> For sure. But the thing about SEO, it changes all the time. Like you could all, be yeah, from you know, one day to the next, from one right. hour to the next hours. So you say like refreshing, you're like, Oh, I'm like top five. And then the next hour, Oh, I'm like 10. And then, so, uh, I have the app on my phone as well. And when, whenever I refresh, I just have to keep in mind, like where averaging, like, where am I at? If I'm averaging, like, in the 20s that means i have room to improve but if if i'm averaging like anywhere between one to ten i'm like it's okay like one to ten sometimes i could be the third could be fifth if you're six page if you're six pages deep (laughs) you got some you got some room to go that's amazing what do you have going on this year that you're looking forward to you're doing a little bit of a rebrand um you're you've got i believe You've got some workshops or some presets going on this year. We talked about your HD presets community. Do you, yeah. yeah, What do you got going on in 2023 that like is exciting to be following and looking after? Yeah. So in uh, last year, uh, I worked with Adventure instead to release the course called the Art of Adventure Weddings and Elopement. Uh, We filmed that thing for a whole year. We literally set up six different style shoots. Uh, we spend hours with an in-studio and I think there's a total of 42 videos. Each of them is about like two hours ish just to teach from A to Z, everything that you need to know about plan and elopement, help couple, advertise, uh, not sorry, not advertise, plan elopement, help couple, photographing, understanding light, composition, storytelling. Um, and so we, for that course, and such a, it's a huge course, every time we open up for enrollment, we only, we have to, we can only open for seven days and we have to close it. So then people who enroll can actually get support from us. Like we, they join a, a private Facebook VIP group. And if they have questions and concern what, as they learn through the course, then we can be their resource. And so, um, for the course, we launched, we relaunched it earlier this year. Um, I don't, I don't think we're launching it this year again, but the next time it's going to be reopened would be, I think, I think maybe March, 2024. That's Um, good to keep an eye out for. That's one of like the huge, like the biggest thing that we usually do, uh, every year to relaunch it, let people enroll in the course again. In terms of other fun stuff for education, um, I I do have the uh, HD preset, uh, the blue hour that I am working on. Uh, I'm so ready to almost, almost ready. I just want to make sure that it's good and then I can launch it um, pretty soon within like a month or so. and then uh, I'm super excited for the end of this year, like around November timeframe. That's when uh, I, I stopped photographing elopements and I 
do mentorships. Uh, I have some photographers who's flying in to do one-on-one -on -one in person mentorship uh, just to help whatever they want to grow in their business. Uh, some photographer who uh, do hand on one-on-one, -on -one, they honestly just want to learn about photography, like no, none of the business side of things, just yeah, like just the art of it. Up the art of it. And then the other half of the photographers that learn from me, they usually want to learn about, you know, like the SEO, the marketing, the how to build a brand that attract people that really uh, from the get go that, you know, because the photographers that um, often get booked uh, from Instagram um, that you can see that if someone follow you on Instagram, they see your journey. They know that you photograph here and there. They watch your Insta stories. You build trust so much easier that way. But what about clients who found you on Google? Like they have it. some of my clients who don't, who found me on Google, they don't even have an Instagram account. And so for them, they don't know that this last year I've been photographing in this country or that country, or I got this award or I got featured on whatever. All they can get is from the photos they see on my website and the information I share with them. And so building trust with those clients look really different from building trust with social media clients. And 100%. so, yeah. And so uh, for my mentorship, uh, some of the photographers really want to learn about the SEO part because then you can just set it up and then let it grow and then let it do its own thing um, without. Yeah, really I think. I think I, I think about that a little bit with, we were talking about advertising. Like I used to advertise on the knot and I thought it was, I still stand by it. The knot is incredibly beneficial. And I think something that I noticed with photographers was if I go and search Seattle wedding photographer and the first couple links that come up are wedding wire, the knot, and then a series of other photographers. Well, let's be on those first couple links. Let's be on wedding wire. Let's be on the knot. Let's be featured there as much as we can so that my name keeps popping up. So if I'm a client that's not finding me on Instagram, I'm just, I'm just searching for a group of 10 photographers to start to reach out and talk to. If I start seeing Kyle, 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 or Henry, Henry, Henry in three or four mm -hmm. locations, trust has been built within their own organic search. Mm -hmm. And then when they reach out, they're like, well, yeah, I saw your name come up five different times you have 198 reviews on google you're the shit henry let's 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 book you for our wedding mm. <laughs> yeah yeah i think it's a i think it's a and have i think that's a really every, everything you chat about in all of your business thus far from our conversations has been so great because you you really cover both sides of things really well and so the idea that yeah the clients that are going to build trust via social media those are totally different people and how you engage with them than the people that find you in other resources and other outlets. And you need to build trust with them too via SEO and, and just how you communicate with them. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, well, thanks for taking time today. I don't want to take any more of your time. I really appreciate you're so transparent with everything you talk about and I'm really excited to next time I'm in Seattle, we need to, we need yes. to get some Tin Tai Fung and <laughs> like I, I, I'm just stoked to see you succeed so incredibly and so quickly. And I'm really excited to see where it continues to go. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking the time to interview me. And this has been so fun just to talk about whatever. And you're such a good host too. You just keep asking like questions like, you know, like when you listen to someone and you ask questions, I think you're doing amazing. Oh, I really appreciate that. I, this is new. This is such a weird position for me to be in and i just like listen to a lot of like actor on actor interviews and like the conan podcast a lot and i'm like whatever i can take from those little places but yeah. i really appreciate the compliment yeah perfect thank cool, you man have a great rest of your day you too